Hey everyone, Cyber CDH here. Hope you're doing really good. So in today's video, I want to talk to you about a suite of zero-day vulnerabilities in Microsoft Exchange. These are known as proxy logon. Some really interesting vulnerabilities for us to know about and also patch against and investigate. But there's a few situations we want to talk around here because there's some stuff going on in the industry which I think is interesting. So I thought I'd just lay down a few of my thoughts onto YouTube here and share them with you all as well. So please, if you're new to the channel, like and subscribe. Also, please comment below as well and let me know your thoughts on this suite of vulnerabilities as well. So what am I talking about? Well, Microsoft has recently detected some zero day exploits being used to attack on premise versions of Microsoft Exchange Server. And they say that they've seen limited and targeted attacks in the wild. And the attacks that they've seen well, the threat actor has used these vulnerabilities to compromise the Exchange server in their entirety. So having access to the server itself and also being able to compromise credentials and of course the emails within these servers as well. Also, what they've observed is a threat actor linked to Chinese state-sponsored adversaries known as Hafnium. And they have apparently installed some additional malware once they've got a foothold on these servers by way of a web shell so they can continuously talk back to their malicious infrastructure and post compromise have uh, access to these compromised servers as well. So the vulnerabilities that we're talking about are CVE 2021-26855, 2021-26857, 2021-26858 and 2021 270665. Bit of a mouthful. I'm sure those of you in the InfoSec community know and have lived and breathed these well over the past week or so. All of these vulnerabilities have now been fixed and there is a patch released for Microsoft Exchange. So if you haven't already patched your Exchange environment, then you should definitely do so. What I would say though, I hear a lot of chatter in the wild about the fact that yes, there's a boatload of servers on the internet that need patching and have been exploited and continue to be scanned for and exploited by many adversaries now given the uh, prevalence of the proof of concept code to exploit these vulnerabilities but even if your exchange servers are not on the internet and are not available for anyone in the world to go and scan and attempt to compromise you should still patch these because super important bad guys will attack internet facing infrastructure for sure but also they'll look to break into your organization in a different way maybe through a phishing email or some other vulnerability exploit to get a foothold in your network and if they see an exchange server that is unpatched then this gives them a bit more of a footprint to attack and there is ready-made proof of concept code out there that you should very much be aware of so Microsoft did a great job in, in kind of sharing with the wider community the patches and the mitigations and all of the detections as well that you can go and hunt for any potential evidence of compromise in this particular case. There's some really good industry collaboration as well. So, but let's just talk about the threat actors involved here because what we know is there's a suite of vulnerabilities which we'll talk about in just a second, but they seem to have been exploited by a state-sponsored threat actor known as Hafnium. And Hafnium, as Microsoft described, primarily target entities in the US across a number of industry sectors, including infectious disease researchers, law firms, higher education institutions, defense contractors, policy think tanks and NGOs as well. Hafnium are known to have previously compromised victims by exploiting vulnerabilities in internet facing servers and also they use open source frameworks for command and control and they invariably use well known file sharing websites to exfiltrate their data to. So what do we know about the vulnerabilities? Well, Microsoft have released some very extensive information, which I'll link to in the description of this video. And firstly, let's talk about CVE 2021-26855. This is the kind of entry point, the foundation for this kind of suite of vulnerabilities that we need to worry about. And it's an SSRF vulnerability, a server side request forgery vulnerability. And this allows an attacker to send arbitrary HTTP requests and more importantly, authenticate as the exchange server. 
There's another bug, the 268.57 uh, CVE is an insecure deserialization vulnerability, and that's where untrusted user controllable data is deserialized by the program. And this gives the threat actor the ability to run code as system. So with system, otherwise known as root privileges on the exchange server itself, but you need to have administrator permissions here or another vulnerability to exploit to take advantage of it. 26858, this is a post authentication arbitrary file write vulnerability. And what that means is if you manage to authenticate to the server, aka use the server side request forgery bug, then you're able to write a file to any path of the server itself. So you can arbitrarily write a web shell or some other piece of malware to further compromise and give yourself a foothold uh, in a persistent location uh, once this is compromised. So even if you patch the original vulnerability the foothold is still there and that's obviously something you need to go hunting for and then secondly 27065 the CVE is another post authentication arbitrary file right so pretty much the same problem just with a different twist on how to exploit it after exploiting the vulnerabilities to gain initial access, the Hafnium threat actors deployed com primarily web shells on the compromised servers. Now, web shells are pieces of code which are usually pretty underwhelming. Here is an example of what this particular web shell looked like. And they allow attackers to steal data and also perform additional actions once the compromise has occurred. And as I say, these web shells could remain persistent even if you then go and patch the original vulnerability itself. In this case, the Hafnium threat actors, they performed a series of post exploitation activity. They would dump process memory from LSAS, which is a well-known uh, method of dumping administrative credentials from a server. They'd also 7-zip the stolen data and for exfiltration purposes, they'd use PowerShell snap-ins to export mailbox data. They would also use Nishang, which is a PowerShell method of gaining a reverse shell on the machine as well, and also known to have downloaded content from GitHub to then be used as a remote server. So pretty serious pretty advanced, pretty technical, and very well-organized adversaries at play here. Okay, so all of that is really interesting, and there's a lot of stuff to take in there with respect to all of the vulnerabilities and how they work. What makes this one so special? Well, we see a lot of vulnerabilities being patched by major software vendors all of the time, critical CVSS scores of 9, 10, whatever. What makes this one so special? Well, in this particular case, it's all about the timeline of events. And in this case, something just does not add up here. And there's a lot to pick apart. And I think the real story is in the timeline. So let's just rewind a little bit and talk about how these vulnerabilities were first identified and the kind of events that we know about from the various reporting in the wild as well. So in terms of who found this bug first, right? How did Microsoft identify this in order to know how to patch it and all the rest of it? Well, there was some research done by a particular individual called Orange Tsai. And if you don't know who Orange is, I'll link his Twitter in the description of this video because you should definitely go and follow him. He is someone who just lives on a different planet of knowledge in terms of adversarial techniques, red teaming, advanced pen testing, and of course, vulnerability research. And Orange works for a company called DevCore, and they're a team of experts in the fields of red teaming and adversarial simulation and all of that kind of good stuff. And they've done some previous research against the likes of VPNs, for example, which I think, if I remember rightly, won Orange Sci a Pony Award, which is the cybersecurity equivalent of the Oscars for his level of knowledge and the research that he managed to perform and the way that obviously he worked with the wider community to go and protect organizations on a global scale by releasing his research to the software vendors. So incredible guy with incredible knowledge manages to discover this pre-authentication vulnerability, which he's calling proxy logon back in December on 10th of December, 2020. Throughout the course of December, obviously super busy on finding how he can further exploit this. And then he discovers the arbitrary file write bug, which he can then chain together to completely compromise the machine. And he found that on December 30th. And he actually tweeted back in January as well. So a few days after, obviously the holiday period and all the rest of it, DevCore themselves reached out to Microsoft on January 5th. 
2021 to report these particular vulnerabilities and Orange actually tweeted about it because obviously this is a massive deal that he's just found you know SSRF arbitrary file write complete compromise of Microsoft Exchange server this is probably his biggest finding to date and of course he's going to tweet about it let everyone know that something big is coming of course he didn't release any information about what it was because he is very responsible within the industry and then subsequently Microsoft gets to work on a patch and they were due to publish that patch throughout the course of March but they had to bring it forward and actually they released their uh, advisory on the 2nd of March as an out of band security advisory for the four vulnerabilities which we've talked about today and also critically they warned of in the wild exploitation of these bugs when you've got something as super serious like complete compromise of exchange servers and many tens of thousands of these servers are connected to the internet public facing there's a major problem if this is being actively exploited in the wild because pretty much every organization across the globe will use Microsoft Exchange in some shape or form. So of course, it begs the question, well, how did somebody exploit this before Microsoft had released and sent advisories out to the industry? Well, naturally, there was some focus on the Microsoft Active Protections Program, otherwise known as MAP. A MAP is a program for security software providers that give them access to vulnerability information early so they can then provide updates and protections to their systems and customers faster. So if you have a security vendor, for example, who might make a firewall or a router or whatever it may be, then of course they want to know before the general public does if there's any kind of weakness in their system that they should know about and, and patch against. And so Microsoft can give these vendors a heads up as to vulnerabilities so you can get ahead of the game, start working on your defenses as well. Members of MAP, they receive this vulnerability information from the Microsoft Security Response Center, the same team that you would go and report your advisory to if you found something that was broken or was weak. And this is in advance of the Microsoft monthly security update. And you can use this information to more quickly provide protections through your security software or your devices or your antivirus or your network-based intrusion, whatever it may be. And in fact, to be on the Microsoft Active Protections Program, the MAP program itself, you have to register and you must sign a non-disclosure agreement. You have to adhere to and practice some form of coordinated vulnerability disclosure as a business. You have to have a Microsoft customer base of more than 10,000 users. You have to be willing for your company to be associated with the program as well, willing and actively create updated protections on a regular basis based on the data provided through Microsoft's MAP program. Also provide protection technology for Microsoft products and have your product commercially available and a boatload of other stuff as well that you need to provide in order to apply to be on the program. So you can imagine this considerable vetting that goes on in Microsoft space here. So there is a question as to whether or not when Orange Sai and the team at DevCore, they release the information to Microsoft, um, Microsoft is obviously going to triage, they're going to test, they're going to validate the information that's sent to them. And of course, if they see something as red hot as this, then they're going to publish the advisory to the map group before it goes out public, because if it's something that's so super serious, then their map partners will obviously want to get ahead of the game and have their protection mechanisms in place as well. So is there a leak in that environment? Well, there's quite an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal. Again, I'll link to that in the description of this video that goes into some detail questioning whether or not there is some kind of weakness in that chain there. And you can imagine the level of trust that you must be given to be part of that program to receive early warning of vulnerabilities to go and patch. But I don't know, it just doesn't still wash for me because you wouldn't necessarily be given all of the ammunition to go and exploit a particular vulnerability. You might be given some IOCs or IOAs, indicators of attack, for example. You might be given some scenarios or some snippets to go and you know fix but would you be given kind of full working payloads? Uh, I don't really, I don't buy it. Although I'm not part of the program and maybe if you are or have involvement then you can comment below and let me know. But it has been known that some companies in the past dating back a few years now 
were actually booted out of the program for uh, taking the information and misusing it and passing that on to other threat actors who are then obviously going on to exploit these vulnerabilities before there was a patch released in the wild. It's almost like a perfect crime though, isn't it? Because if you're a, a security vendor and you have this vested interest in protecting your customers, you're going to have such juicy information before the general public. So if you are an adversary and certainly a state-sponsored adversary, then almost seems like there's no more perfect target than this kind of company to get your teeth into and go and compromise because why go and look for one bug when you can have the research and the pipeline of many to, to go and further your adversarial needs. But again, something's just not adding up here. And the reason why is because a company called Velexity have a network uh, monitoring service. And they, through their global sensors, were able to detect the first exploitation of this particular attack. And the date of that is January 3rd, 2021. And that's pretty interesting because that's two days before DevCore actually released the information to Microsoft. DevCore told Microsoft on January 5th, but on January 3rd, there was the first public attack noticed by Velexity. So maybe there's an issue with the Microsoft program, the Mac program, but maybe that's one part of it. But that came after that, after January 5th. What came before was a public attack Velexity noticed, but that was before Orange Sai and the team at DevCore had told Microsoft. Now, of course, I'm not insinuating in any stretch of the imagination that the team of DevCore or Orange Sight are involved in any nefarious activity whatsoever. Far from it, because these guys are world class in terms of their vulnerability disclosure programs. But are they the target of a malicious campaign? Have they been compromised? Is somebody attacking their environment or has do they have a malicious insider there that potentially is leaking information? Or is there some kind of compromise in the chain there between submitting a report and triaging it and testing it and having the information ready to go to Microsoft? Something there that is leaked out somewhere. Now it's not beyond the realms of possibility this. There has been some recent examples where state-sponsored uh, adversaries have been targeting security researchers and known to be using like backdoored Visual Studio plugins and all the rest of it to, to compromise these researchers to just sniff out the stuff that they're working on. Why do the hard work by going to find the bugs yourself when you can, you know, effectively backdoor one of these researchers? But you've got to imagine that someone like DevCore and the team of experts that they have working for them wouldn't fall victim to something super easy like a phishing email or something like that or a LinkedIn message or anything. It's going to take a lot to compromise this environment and they have said themselves that they have done an investigation internally and they believe that everything is in order. So it really does beg the question here. It could even be that maybe they were testing it and maybe whoever they tested the exploit against, maybe they were vulnerable to a particular compromise or they had their networks being monitored in such a way that an adversary would be able to pick up on this. And if it is state sponsored and, you know, had the capabilities to build on the payloads and all the rest of it and figure things out just from some snippets of information, then, then maybe, but... I don't know, I just feel like there's a lot more to this story than we don't know. This is what makes it super interesting to be involved in this industry right now. Not only are we dealing with vulnerabilities of the most serious nature that we need to go and patch from an instant response perspective, we've also got this whole risk. We talk about third party risk in the industry quite a lot. We've got this massive third party risk here where researchers who are doing good honest work and submitting bugs to software vendors somewhere in that process something is broken and someone is stealing information hopefully we'll get to the bottom of this if we do it will be a fascinating story and i hope to come back and give you guys an update on it but for now patch your servers look for indicators of attack look for indicators of compromise keep things up to date and stay curious
Thanks all for watching. Please like and subscribe. I welcome your comments, your questions, and also join in the conversation as well. You can find me on Twitter at CyberCDH. I'll see you there.